in this video you will see an example of a proof which is slightly harder than previous proofs. This is useful because we, you will need to give proofs yourself in exercises, so here you can watch an example. But why do we need this particular theorem, the cauchy schwarz inequality? Well, the fact that it's named after two mathematicians already tells us that it's probably an important theorem. We will need this cauchy schwarz inequality already in the next video when we'll we look in the triangle inequality. So, let's look at cauchy schwarz first. So, what does this inequality tell us? It says that the inner product, q inner product v, between any two vectors in our Rn, smaller or equal than the length of u times the length of v. That's always true. How can we prove that? Well, we will do it in R2. If you do it in R3 and R4, the proof goes the same, but you just have to write down much more terms. So let's stick to R2 to keep that a bit in check. So we call vector u, u1, u2, and vector v, v1, v2. And I will have to prove this for any values of u1 and u2 and v1 and v2. So you cannot just plug in some values. No, you have to prove this for any values of u1, u2, v1 and v2. So what are we going to do? Well, we use a trick. First of all, we say if this inner product u inner product v is smaller than zero, well, then we have something negative here. On the right hand side, you have the product of length, which is always positive. So then the inequality is satisfied. So OK, done. So that part of the proof went fast. But what now if the inner product is positive, so bigger or equal than zero? Then we can use the following trick. We know that if a is smaller or equal than b, then a squared is smaller or equal than b squared, because the parabola is an increasing function for the positive values uh, a and b. So that's why we need this positivity here. So if the inner product u inner product v is smaller or equal than length of u length of v, that is equivalent to proving that the squares uh, satisfy the same inequality. So instead we will we will not prove this one, but we will prove this one over here, which tells us then that that one is also satisfied. How are we going to do prove this one? Well, we use another trick. We take this inner product here to the right hand side. So we will show that the product of these lengths minus the inner product is positive. So this over here is the inequality we want to prove. And that one is exactly equivalent to the first inequality, to this one, or written here as well. So how are we going to prove that this inequality is satisfied? Because we haven't done anything yet. We just have been shifting around a bit. Now, what are we going to do? First, we compute length of u squared times length of v squared. Length of u squared, length of v squared, and then we work out the brackets. u1, v1 with the squares, u1, v2 with the squares, u2, v1 with the squares, and u2, v2 with the squares. OK, that's the first one. Then we compute the second term, u in our product v squared, so u in our product v, here we have the u and the v, inner product u1 v1 plus u2 v2 over here, and then we need the square, first term squared over here, plus second term squared over there, plus the double product, so two times u1 v1 u2 v2. Okay, there we are. And then we have to diff take the difference of those two terms, so u squared v squared minus u inner product v squared. And then you, I think you already see something nice happening if you take the difference uh, over here. Because uh, let's take a look. These terms over here cancel out, and uh, these terms here cancel out. So if you take the difference, this term, and that term, and that term are left. So u1 v2 squared plus u2 v1 squared minus this term over here. And we have to show that it's positive. But why? I mean, okay, this is positive, that is positive, but this could drag the whole thing to something negative, or not. Not a nice trick. This is, in fact, a square. It is u1 v2 minus u2 v1 squared. Why is that? Well, check. You, if you work out the brackets and go backwards, then you get u1 squared v2 squared, this term over here, plus u2 squared v1 squared, that term over here, minus the double product, 
u1, v2, u2, v2 is exactly this term over here. So you see this combination of terms is in fact a square. And we know that squares are always positive, so that means that uh, this, uh, this inequality over here holds. That means that this combination in fact was positive. And that finally means going backwards that in fact Cauchy Schwarz indeed holds. So now we know for all factors u and v that u and the product of v is smaller or equal than the length of u times the length of v.